quite leather hard yet, but it's gonna do the trick for kind of what I wanna show you guys and some of the tools that can really help you with some really cool different effects. If you can't see, you could come around. There's some space over here. Um, ideally, this would be a little firmer. Your projects are probably firmer, so um, you guys are in, in good standing, but this will do the trick. So I've got some tools here. Um, pencil kind of will help me guide what I wanna do. Some of these smaller uh, detail tools, loop tools, uh, and again, they all have different tips. So you might want to look at, are they rounded? Are they squared? What are you trying to accomplish? That'll help you. Maybe you want to use a uh, wipeout tool. I love a good modeling tool, stylus, things like that. So all these tools are going to be really helpful. Um, additionally, having some soft clay will really help. Why don't you all grab just a small bowl of water? And then Emma, would you grab a, a paintbrush behind you for me? Any paintbrush will do. All right, so I figure in this, I'll do two um, examples of sort of a remove, um, a subtractive, thank you, a subtractive method, which is pulling some of the current clay off, and an additive, an additive method, which is adding clay. So I'm just gonna kind of separate this so you guys can kind of see the difference. So a common um, decoration is something like uh, paint, like paint globs or um, like waves are really common. Um, here, you can put that over here. Thank you so much. So I'll just do that for, for purposes of this little tutorial. And so I'll kind of draw out, you know, some sort of, sort of paint. What kind of looks like paint is sort of on the surface, yeah? And I'm simply just doing that with my pencil. No big deal. Um, so for an additive method, method, a really fun way to kind of make it look like you've attached uh, or that the clay is actually, the paint is actually falling from the clay is simply to take a uh, soft clay and make tiny little coils. They don't have to be perfectly round, but soft clay is usually best and kind of create the shapes that you've already created. I'm just simply pressing it on the surface. And by using tools like the modeling tool, you could kind of see how I can sort of build up just the sort of outside edge. It doesn't have to be the whole, the whole thing. You don't have to make an entire um, glob of paint or whatever. It could just be sort of this outside edge. And if the clay is of similar wetness, you don't need to slip and score. If your project's leather hard and you're wanting to add a little bit of clay to the surface, you could simply grab a stylus tool, add a, add a little bit of scoring, throw a little slip on there, and then kind of, kind of go. But you could see how just very sculpturally almost, I'm just simply attaching little coils just to the outside edge. They don't really have to be, and you could kind of move them around and sort of guide them using a wet paintbrush to go kind of all the way around it. Not only helps lock it in, but it also helps smooth out all those edges. And so you could kind of work with it, work with it there. But you see how pretty casually and pretty easily I was just adding clay, and now you get this kind of look that there are some actual paint or water or something kind of coming off the surface. So very simply using some coils, soft coils, and just going around that outer edge. You could even use tiny little baby coils around the outer edge. As long as you're building up where it meets, it's gonna give the illusion that the whole thing is on top of the surface. Does that make sense for everyone? So the subtractive method is probably great for you guys if your projects are a little firmer. It's the same idea, except now what you're gonna do is you're gonna be removing the clay around your sketch. And you're gonna wanna do that with some of these detail tools. So simple, you have a lot more clay to work with. This is about this is about quarter inch, maybe three eighths of an inch thick, and yours is probably about that, if not more. And so you have more clay to work with than you think. And by simply using some of these loop tools and removing some of this clay, you could kind of see how 
if this was firmer, it'd be a little easier, but you guys will be all right because you guys have leather hard projects. But you could see that if I just simply start to shave away the clay right in and around that line that you've kind of set for yourself, what's gonna end up happening is the clay that's already there is raised up now, yeah? And you're pulling out what's around it. So by the time you grab your paintbrush and you smooth this all out, you can see how you're giving the opportunity for that clay, it's not super neat, but you get the idea, for that clay to now be kind of raised up on the surface. And you don't really need to pull out all this clay to give the illusion that it's raised because it is popping out of the surface. You guys see that? You see that popping out of the surface? And by simply just sort of gradually making that gradient um, meaning how deep it is here and how not deep it is here. By making it just kind of gradual, you're giving the illusion that this, these paint droplets are added to the surface. But you don't really have to work that hard at taking all this clay out. Oftentimes people just start going, all right, I've got to remove all this clay. And you don't really need to do that because as long as you remove what's around it and then kind of gradually uh, remove the pressure, you're gonna give that illusion that those paint um, sort of droplets are on top of the surface or popping out of your project. The one thing you want to avoid is just saying, okay, I wanna do some paint. I wanna make it look like honey, like honey pot is really popular. I wanna make it look like honey is coming off the surface. And then you just take your pencil and you go like this and then you leave it and you go, there it is, it's honey. Um, it's not bad except it's not very realistic, right? It wouldn't just be a line. And then people say, oh, well, I'm gonna glaze it. Well, that's totally fine. Well, then you might as well not even do the line at all, right? Because if it were just actual honey and you were gonna glaze it on, then you would just use the paint and not so much a line. So what ends up being the most successful is doing a little bit of both, adding some form of three dimension. And later in the trimester, when we go to glaze, you'll also add the color. But you can see here very easily how just quickly pulling out the clay in and around the line that you've set makes it so much more successful than just drawing a line. Yeah, yeah. So I'll leave this up here. You could come and check.